Our next chapter is alkylate and elimination reaction. Elimination reaction involves the loss of element from the starting material to form a new pi bond, which is in the structure below. In this reaction, the, the element of the H H, which is hydrogen and halide, are lost and an alkene is formed. Equation 1 and 2 illustrate example of elimination reaction. In both reaction, a base remove the element of an acid which is H H from the organic starting material. Removal of the element H H is called dehydrohalogenation. Dehydrohalogenation is an example of beta elimination. The curved arrow actually shows the, the bond which are broken and form in the process. Tables here shows the common bases used in dehydrohalogenation. To draw any product of dehydrohalogenation, find the alpha carbon. Identify all the beta carbon with hydrogen atom and remove the element of the hydrogen and X from the alpha and beta carbon and form a sigma and pi bond. The double bond of an alkene consists of sigma bond and a pi bond. Overlap of the two sp2 hybrid orbitals form the carbon-carbon sigma bond and the overlap of the two p orbitals form the carbon-carbon pi bond. Look at this structure. Arcing are classified according to the number of carbon atom bonded to the carbon of the double bond. Listed here is the mono substitute, di substitute, tri substitute, tetra substitute alkene. Carbon atom bonded to the double bond are screened in red as shown here. Look at these two molecules which is butane and two butane. For butane, this conformation interconvert by rotation and it represents a same molecule. But for the two butane, this molecule cannot intervert by rotation and they are actually different molecule which is cis isomer and trans isomer. Because of restricted rotation, two zero isomer of two butane are possible which is cis 2 butane and trans 2 butane. They are actually disromers because they are stereoisomers they are not mirror image of each other. In general, Trans alkene are more stable than cis alkene because the group bonded to the double bond carbon which is far apart. It reduces the steric interaction. From left to right, increasing the number of up group will increase the stability of an alkene. The higher the percent of the S character, the more readily an atom accept electron density. Trans 2 butane is more stable than cis 2 butane. But both are more stable than 1 butane, which is mono substituted alkene. So then the increasing of the stability from this for the structure is from left to right. Mechanism of elimination. There are two mechanism of elimination which is E2 and E1. Just as there are two mechanisms of substitution, which is SN1 and SN2. E2 mechanism is bimolecular elimination, but E1 mechanism is unimolecular elimination. E2 and E2 and SN2 reaction has some features in common, as do E1 and S1 reaction. The most common mechanism for dehydrohalogenation is the E2 mechanism. It's as a bit second order kinetic and both the alkyl halide and the base appears in the red reaction which is stated here where the reaction is concerted. All bonds are broken and formed in a single step. The reaction here shows that the for the E2 mechanism the base Hydroxyl remove a proton from the beta carbon, forming water which is a by-product. The electron pair in the beta 
carbon hydrogen bond form the new pi bond and then the leaving group which is Br minus bromide come off with the electron pair in the C Br bond. The diagram here shows the energy diagram for the E2 reaction. In the transition state, the CH and CBr bond are partially broken. The OH and pi bond are partially formed. They are close parallels between E2 and SN2 mechanism in how the identity of the base, the living group and the solvent affect the rate. The base appears in the rate equation, so the rate of the E2 reaction increases as the strength of the base increases. E2 reactions are generally run with strong negatively charged bases like hydroxyl and alkoxide. This, these are the two useful bases for the E2 reactions. The reaction here shows that an E2 elimination with DBN which is used as a base. Uh, since the bond to the living group is partially broken in the transition state, the better the living group, the faster the E2 reaction. Shown here is the increasing living group ability will increase the rate of the E2 reaction from left to right. And polar aprotic solvent normally increase the rate of E2 reaction. The SN2 and E2 mechanism differ in how the R group affect the reaction rate. As the number of R group on the carbon with the living group increases, the rate of the E2 reaction is increases. So then the rate of the SN2 reaction increase from right to left but the rate of the E2 reaction increasing from left to right. Mechanism of Elimination E2 Increasing the number of R group on the carbon which the living group form more highly substituted, more stable arcing in E2 reaction. From the structure below, 1 bromobutene and 2 bromo 2 methyl propene, the di-substitute arcing is more stable. The tertiary alkyl halide react faster than the primary alkyl halide. So then, from this product, the diacetyl alkene is more stable from the product of 2 bromo 2 methyl propene. Table here summarizes the characteristic of the E2 mechanism, which is second order kinetic, and then one step mechanism. The more substitute halide we react fastest and then this reaction favored by strong bases better living group the faster the reaction and the, the reaction favored by polar aprotic solvent recall that when alkyl halide have two or more different beta carbon more than one alkene product is formed when it when this happen one of the product usually predominates the major product which is A is the more stable product, the one with the most substituted double bond. This phenomenon is called the Sizif rule. A E2 is the regio selective when it shares predominantly or exclusively only one conditional isomer when more than one is possible. So from this structure, we can see that the major product is the product D, which is tri-substitute arcing, while the minor product is product C, which is di-substitute arcing. So then the preferred pathway is the second one, which is pathway to the product D. A reaction is stereoselective when it's formed predominantly only one stereoisomer when two or more are possible. So then the E2 reaction is stereoselective because one stereoisomer is formed preferentially. Mechanism of elimination E1. An E1 reaction exhibits first order kinetic. 
the E1 reaction proceed via a two-step mechanism. The bond to the living group break fast before the bond is formed. The slow step is unimolecular, which is involved only the alkyl halide. Reaction here shows that the, the E1 mechanism. The first step is the CI bond is broken. And the second step, if, if the C and H bond is clear and the pi bond is formed. The diagram here shows the energy diagram for an E1 reaction. Since the E1 mechanism have two steps, so there are two energy barrier. Step 1 is rate determining step where the activating energy is higher than the activation energy for the second step and making the transition state for the step 1 higher in energy. The rate of the E1 reaction increases as the number of the R group on the carbon with the living group increases. So then, the increase in the rate of the E1 reaction increases the carbon cation stability from the left to right will increase the E1 reaction. The strength of the base usually determines whether a reaction follow the E1 or E2 mechanism. Strong base like hydroxide and aquoxide will favor E2 reaction, while the weaker base like water and alcohol favors E1 reaction. E1 reaction are regioselective, favoring formation of the more substituted more stable alkene. Size zero applies to the E1 reaction. From this elimination reaction, we can see from the structure there are two different beta carbon, which is level beta 1 and beta 2. After reaction with the water, we have the product which is the tri-substituted alkene and di-substituted alkene. So the product A, which is the major product, which consists of the tri substitute alkene, which is more R group. Tables here summarize the characteristic of the E1 mechanism. The mechanism is first order and is the two-step mechanism. More substitute halide react fastest, and then this reaction favored by weaker base such as water and alcohol. A beta living group will make the reaction fastest because the bond to the living group is partially broken in the rate determining step. This reaction needed polar protic solvent. SN1 and E1 reaction have exactly the same first step whereby the formation of the carbocation. They actually differ in what happens to the carbocation. For the SN1 reaction, the nucleophilic attacks a carbocation. In an SN1 reaction, the product is the substitution product, while in an E1 reaction, the, the product is an alkene. E1 reaction offers, often occurs with a competing with the SN1 reaction. What is the stereochemistry of the E2 reaction? Look at these two structure, where the H, the first one H and X are on the same side. We call this as a sim periplanar, but on the second structure H and X are on the opposite sides, which is anti periplanar. From this structure, we can see that E2 elimination occurs most often in the anti periplanar geometry. This arrangement allows the molecule to react in the lower energy staggered conformation and allow the incoming base and leaving group to be further away from each other. Look at these two structures. These are two possible geometry for the E2 reaction. 
The first one, an anti-periplanar arrangement has a staggered conformation. The two electron-rich group are far apart from the base. But for the second one, two electron-rich group are close together with the with the base. So then the preferred ge geometry is the, the first one. Stereochemistry of the E2 reaction. So now we consider chlorocyclohexane which exists as two chair conformation. Conformation A is preferred since the bulkier chlorine chlorine group is in the equatorial position which is structure A. The requirement for the trans diiso geometry means that elimination must occur from the less stable conformer which is conformer B. Look at these two structure. The trans diiso geometry for the E2 elimination in chlorocyclohexane. For the conformation A, the chlorine is at the equatorial position, but the structure B, the chlorine at the axial position. From this structure, we can see that conformation A, whereby chlorine at equatorial position, and no reaction with this conformation. But for the conformation B, chlorine at an axial position, and this conformation reacts. This is actually the H and Cl whereby the position is actually trans diaxial and form a product. Now consider the E2 dehydrohalogenation of cis and trans 1-chloro 2-methyl cyclohexane. This cis isomer exists as the two conformation which is conformation A and conformation B. For the conformation B, chlorine at the axial position and the methyl group and the equatorial position and this conformation react compared to the cis isomer whereby methyl group in the axial position and the chlorine in the equatorial position. Because conformation B has two different axial alpha hydrogen label HA and HB, E2 reaction occurs in two different directions to afford to alkene. The major product contains the more stable tri-substitute double bond as predicted by the Sazif rule. Look at the structure of the trans 1-chloro 2-methyl cyclohexane which exists as two conformer which is conformer C and conformer D. Conformer C having two equatorial substitution but for the conformer D having two axial substituent. If we compare both the structure, conformer D will react. Because conformer D has only one axial hydrogen, the E2 reaction occurs only in one direction to afford a single product. A comparison of the E1 and E2 mechanism. For E2 mechanism, which is much more common and useful, it favored by strong negatively charged bases, especially hydroxyl and alkoxide. The reaction occurs with primary, secondary and tertiary halide. The order of the activity is shown here. And for E1 mechanism, which is much less useful because a mixture of the S1 and E1 product usually result. This reaction favored by weaker neutral bases such as water and alcohol. This mechaniz mechanism does not occur with the primary alkyhalide because they form highly unstable primary carbocation. Alkene synthesis in E2 reaction. A single elimination reaction produces a pi bond of an alkene. Two elimination reactions produce two pi bonds of an alkene. Two elimination reactions are needed to remove 
2 moles of HS from a dihalide substrate. From the reaction below, we can see that two different starting material, which is vicinal dihalide and germina dihalide, to form an alkyne. For the first reaction, remove of 1 mole of HS will produce an alkene, and then remove a second mole of H8 will produce an alkyne. In this reaction, stronger bases are needed to synthesize alkyne by dehydrohalogenation than are needed to synthesize alkene. The type the typical base used is amide, used as the sodium salt sort of sodium amide. This reaction shows a different kind of the dehydrogenation reaction of the dihalide to afford alkynes. Look at the reaction mechanism here. The flow of electron showing the mechanism of the elimination reaction where the nucleophile attack the abstract the proton and then the electron goes to carbon and the bromine leaf to form a product. Predicting the mechanism for the reactant, whether SN1, SN2, E1 or E2. Good nucleophile, there are weak bases favor substitution over elimination. So from the structure here, the reaction between the alkylate and iodide using the solvent which is alcohol. From this reaction, whereby using the weak base, we favor the substitution reaction. If we use strong or non-nucleophilic base, we favor the elimination reaction, as shown in the reaction here. Tertiary alkylate react by all mechanism except S and 2 but with strong bases, the elimination occurs by an E2 mechanism. A strong base or nucleophile favor an SN2 or E2 mechanism, but tertiary halide are too sterically hindered base and to undergo an SN2 reaction. So, only E2 elimination product occurs, as shown here. For the with weak nucleophile or bases, a mixture of SN1 and E1 products result. A weak base or nucleophile favor SN1 and E1 mechanism and both will occur. So then the product is SN1 and E1 product. How about for the primary alkylate? Primary alkylate react by SN2 and E2 mechanism, but with strong nucleophile, a strong base or nucleophile favors SN2 or E2, but primary halides are the least reactive halide type in elimination, therefore, only SN2 reaction occurs. So then, from this reaction, we can produce only SN2 product. With strong, sterically hindered bases, elimination occurs by E2 mechanism. A strong, sterically hindered base cannot act as nucleophile. So, elimination occurs and the mechanism is E2. So then, the product is only elimination product. Secondary alkylate react by all mechanism. For example, the first reaction with strong bases and nucleophile, it produces two product, which is SN2 product and E2 product. But for the strong sterically hindered bases, it produces only elimination product, which is E2 product. But with weak nucleophile or bases. It produces a mixture of SN1 and E1 product, which is SN1 and E1.